So hello, uh, so I'm Eve. Um, I'm project manager at Camp to Camp, and uh, I will talk about digital twins with Ben here from Virtual City Systems. So yes, uh, we will uh, have two parts of the of the talk. First, we will um, uh, talk about the Rennes Metropole project. So Rennes is a city in, in France. Um, then I will uh, have a, a word about uh, Suez project. That is a quite a different one. Uh, it's two di uh, digital twins, but uh, quite different, you will see. So first, maybe a, a word about uh, Camp to Camp. So we are a company, a s uh, service company, uh, founded in 2001. Uh, now, I guess we are 200 now. <laughs> it's uh, growing. Uh, we're based in France, uh, Germany, and Switzerland, and uh, active in three areas, but are always open source. Uh, first department uh, about uh, ERP, so business solutions, um, infrastructure solutions, more, um, yeah. Uh, cloud uh, management, and of course, Joe Special, and that's my department. Yeah. yeah, hello from me. My name is Ben. I work at Virtual City Systems in Berlin, Germany. We are not as many as camp to camp We're just about 25 people. And we focus on 3D city models. I think that's the, the core of the company. We do a lot of development, and we do some project work. Um, and the project work mainly revolves around urban planning and digital twins, but also urban simulation. So um, we're a member of the Cotfem group who are big on finite element simulation. And we have a lot of colleagues in Grafing, which is close to Munich, that do fancy stuff with your 3D data to simulate wind, climate, detonations, as you can see in the picture here. Detonations. <laughs> okay, so now about this uh, this project uh, at Rennes. Uh, so, uh, what is a digital twin? First, uh, digital twin is a virtual representation of uh, some reality. Uh, when we speak about uh, this digital twin, maybe we think about uh, cities and 3D, but it could be anything and even 2D if it's a virtual representation of, uh, uh, of some reality. And so in the case of uh, Rennes Metropole, the, 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 the goals of the project was those five goals. It is, uh, there the, are um, uh, general goals for digital twins, I guess, uh, manage public policies, uh, cooperate with citizens, also work with professionals, and of course support decisions. So by modelization, simulation. Um, and at the end, uh, one goal also is to follow the project, so uh, from design to maintenance. Uh, in the case of this project, Rennes Metropole, uh, the, the, the main focus was uh, the cooperation with citizens. So the goal of the project in one sentence, uh, it's a participative portal, so co collaboration with citizens. Um, based on a 2D and 3D visualization, it's a digital twin, of course, and what was very important for the customer uh, open source. And Ren is here. <laughs> there. <laughs> okay, we um, had uh, three use cases in this project. Uh, first is the solar cadastre, so it's a simulation of uh, uh, solar panels on, uh, on, um, on roofs. Um, uh, about transportation, so uh, it was to display new lines, new transport lines, and to have feedbacks from, uh, from uh, citizens. And the last one is about uh, visualization of uh, electromagnetic waves, so antennas, where they are, and technical stuff about those antennas. Three main challenges in the project. First, it was a co-construction. So we did work with virtual city systems, but also with uh, uh, designers, because of uh, the fact that the general public is the end user. It was very important to, to work with designers, and the designers did work with uh, uh, some uh, uh, citizens to have uh, feedback and to have a, a very good UI and user exper uh, experience. Um, 
and of course performance and reliability because uh, Rennes is quite a big city and so uh, we will have uh, a lot of users, if we hope <laughs> to have a lot of users using the application. And I guess that's the case. So now some, uh, some screenshots. Uh, the first use case about uh, um, simulation of photovoltaic production. So uh, this is an example of uh, the digital twin we have with um, the, the, the solar radiation on, on, um, on the buildings. Then on, a, on the next screen, you can uh, have an automatic um, uh, that, uh, it's automatic that uh, they put the, the, the solar panels on the, on, the, on the roof that you selected, and then you can remove some solar panels of, uh, if they are of, uh, windows or, or chimneys, etc. And so you, you can remove them, and then you have uh, here uh, 36, I guess, yes, 36 solar panels, and uh, it is displayed on the, on the roof. And at the end, the user can see uh, a simulation of the uh, electric uh, production during the year with um, a gra uh, nice graphs, etc. Second one is about uh, public transportation. So here we have the uh, display of a future new line uh, uh, in, uh, in the Rennes city. And um, the goal here is to uh, have a, some kind of mediation with the citizen, and, um, and the citizen can also give feedback uh, yeah, if they're happy with the new, new transportation line. And the third one is uh, about only visualization in this case, so the, the, we can see the, the antennas where they are, uh, have uh, information technical information and have uh, uh, know about the electromagnetic waves uh, emissions. Yeah. Thank you. So I'm going to be talking a bit about what you just saw and how we participated. As it said, it was a co-production. Um, and um, Ren Metropole was uh, lucky to have designers work directly with the end user, which is tricky and very expensive, time consuming to do. Um, so what you saw in the slides, what we provided is basically just uh, this geospatial stack that we use. So we use open layers, we use cesium. In the background we use PostGIS or we use 3D City DB. Um, which is also maintained by us most of the time. And uh, we combine it into a library. And this was the first thing that we put open source was this library. So it's just, uh, it's, we call it core, it's just a GIS library. And after the project and also the things we did with Ren, uh, we realized we need more on top because not everybody has the money or the time for designers and uh, these long discussions. So on top of the core, we also built a UI, which is just a basic UI. And most of the time, you have very special use cases, like we had with Rennes Metropole. So we started implementing a plugin interface. Um, and then we started developing a lot of plugins ourselves, which we then also put open source. Um, and I'm going to quickly talk about this. So. First of all, we have this core library, which we've used in the Rennes Metropole um, project. And this is basically all the, the mapping you saw was done using this library. It has an abstraction, so that was one of the important bits uh, with Rennes Metropole. So you can seamlessly move from 2D to 3D. And even if you have oblique imagery, you can move to that as well, um, which makes it easier for users that aren't that versed in GIS to kind of navigate. And it also makes for nice models which is also important for um, city planning, is, is that you can have semi-3D data visualized. So you know this is going to be a building, and you know how high it's going to be, maybe, but you don't have an architectural model yet. This is what you see here. You can do these little green cubes or blue cubes or whatever, and just kind of say, OK, this is where I want to build. And um, we made it in a way that you can save these configuration files somewhere, and put it onto a server, and then the end user can just reload this configuration. Um, 
that makes it easier to deploy. So you don't need a backend component, you can just configure the front end using a JSON file and push it onto a server and that's that. And then we started um, building a UI framework which kind of just helps with basic map navigation and content management. Um, it's based off of Vudify and Vue, um, for those of you who know it. Um, and it just provides basic components that you would need and some components that you would need in a GIS environment like a coordinate input or um, an extent bounding box editor, things that you don't have in a typical UI framework. And then we just started developing functionality and we thought previously we had the functionality just as part of the library, but um, with all these specialized use cases that and we don't know what use cases are to come, we decided to only have a minimal functionality in the, in the library, in the UI itself, and push everything into plugins that we develop ourselves. But we opened uh, the plugin interface as much as possible so that anyone could develop a plugin. And right now we have about 20-ish plugins that we've placed open source. You can find them on GitHub. Um, mainly used for those functionalities that you typically need, search, draw, analyze. There's some scene handling things that are nice, so you can change the view mode to first person so that you can walk around your city. Um, you can generate camera flights, these things. Uh, but if you don't need that, you can just not include it into your application and you don't have the, the fuzz of all these many buttons and functionalities, which was also something that was important in Ren is that they said the end user just wants to do one thing. They don't want to do anything else. Um, so we kind of try to implement that in that way that you can do just the one thing if you want to. And then we created a, a tool to help you easily do this yourself. And this is basically how we run our own research projects, but this could work for any research project. It's all open source and it kind of guides you through a setup step. Um, kind of try to display this here. Uh, it guides you through what you want to do. You can choose from a template you want to start out with. Uh, start it and you have your WebGIS application running and can start adding your own functionality. And this has proved to be very speedy and it's also fairly easy to learn so junior developers can start pretty fast. And as of last year, or this year, it's also completely typed in TypeScript, which was important to us as well. Thank you. So now about this uh, Suez project, it's quite different. Um, the context, so Suez is a um, company that uh, works for uh, water and uh, waste management. And, and the goal was here to have a POC, to proof of concept, to uh, uh, to know about this uh, network they uh, they uh, they built, and uh, t have tec detailed tec uh, technical uh, information about uh, the, the the network of pipes, etc. Uh, so uh, the main goal here is to develop a, a web component um, with two uh, two types of models. Um, first. Um, a, a visitable network, you will see afterwards uh, with uh, some uh, screenshots, um, and also non-visitable uh, non networks. So the fact that uh, uh, some models are here uh, only virtual and other are uh, captured, and you will see the difference uh, afterwards. Um, one challenge here uh, was the fact that uh, we have two uh, types of uh, navigation. One is the classic navigation for uh, uh, any uh, cesium uh, model. And the uh, second one is uh, indoor mode. So it, the goal is to navigate inside the pipes uh, and to, to be able to see if there are uh, problems in the pipes, etc. And um, the, go, the, 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 the challenge was to have a smooth uh, transitions between the two modes. So we used uh, Cesium, uh, Cesium with uh, advanced features to be able to go uh, underground. Um, 
And the, the goal was to have a complete and detailed representation uh, uh, of the reality um, and to have a better experience for user, um, interactive and engaging. So yes, now you understand what I meant by uh, indoor navigation. <laughs> it's not very indoor, but it's uh, in pipes. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, yeah, this is a constraint navigation. This is quite challenging to do, uh, to be able to have uh, a precise control of the camera position. Um, also, the ability to recenter the camera, because if you go uh, a bit too uh, close to the, 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 the sides of the pipes, you have to, to no, no, come back to the center. Um, also about the orientation, of course. And, uh, to, to have an intuitive uh, way of uh, walking inside the pipe, uh, we, we change the navigation to have a navigation similar to video games. So a, a word about the data. Uh, we have uh, three uh, kind of uh, sources. Um, the first one, it was about the uh, location of the pipes. So uh, the source was a 2D, um, was 2D, and um, so it was possible then to to decide where to put the pipes. And uh, we had also information like uh, the depth of the uh, of the pipes, uh, the size of it, etc. Um, then we had some information for the the models that were not the pipes. So, for instance, pumps, etc. And it, it was some uh, standard models and not uh, um, uh, so captured data like the, you, uh, you saw for the, the pipes. And for this, we used uh, FME. And the last one is, um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> the last one is, uh, yeah, the, the pipes themselves, so the captured data uh, from the, for the inside of the pipes. And um, this was a bit more complex with a hybrid processing chain, uh, and uh, it came from the, the capture of uh, 3D uh, data. Yeah, so thank you for your, your attention, I guess. <laughs> thank you for inspiring talk, and thank you for your questions. I hope there are some. I believe there are some. Give me some questions. <laughs> Is the conversion uh, process that you had to 3D tiles through post, uh, Postgres and the other forms, that's also in the GitHub repo that you're open sourcing for the pipeline processing? You mean, you mean this Yeah. Yeah, not the FME, but the yeah, OBJ yeah. and the... <laughs> um, uh, I have to check with, I, I was the, not the project manager, okay. so I have to check, but I, I could. Um, I think it was quite uh, quite uh, specific to the project, okay. but uh, um, come back to me then. I will have the answer. <laughs> yeah, I, I have only a question about the solar cadaster. Mm -hmm. uh, which data did you use to calculate it? Like a leader or? Um, the data was uh, provided by the customer actually. So uh, also here I have to check for to answer exactly that. Uh, we, we don't provide the data uh, in, in main, um, most of our projects that come to camp. We, the, 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 the data is uh, provided by the customer. So uh, yeah, if you, you want to have the answer, I have to check further. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe someone here and backwards when I'm here. Someone in the middle. So many thanks okay. one more time. Thank you.